at this point, you know, you're you you start your whole you know adult film company and and you're doing your thing with that, and mm-hmm. then Easy E called you one day from yeah. the hospital. Yeah, I was at his house shooting in Norwalk, and he called me, and I'm like, what was he calling me for? He bugging me on my set. I had to stop shooting, and he called me. He said, "Hey, watch yourself, huh?" You know, I don't remember nothing else but watch yourself. He said that twice. And I didn't know what he was talking about too later when I found out what he had. But then I, I seen what he was saying. He talking about watch the girls, you know. Because I was shooting girls and, you know, there's, you know, benefits with sometimes. So he was telling me, watch the girl. Because he never wanted me to know he had AIDS. He never told me. He never, he didn't want, I didn't get to go to the hospital, nothing at all. Right. I mean, he called you, and by this point, he had full-blown AIDS. I, I don't know. At that time, this was before uh, Cedar sinai Okay. This oh, was two weeks it. before Cedar sinai Okay. He went it. in for bron- bronchitis or whatever, I think it was some kind of breathing. That's what he went in that hospital for. That's where he called me from, from the little hospital. And then, I guess, two weeks later, he went to Cedar sinai But by the time he got to Cedar sinai it might have been, flu- I don't know, full-blown or something. Right, because you went to go see him. He was already in a coma. Yeah. That was a uh, after the surgery. They were trying to do a surgery yeah. to clear his lungs or whatever it is. And they, they knew it was, whatever it was, 50-50 chance that he can not come out of it. So they put him in a coma. He wasn't in a coma. They induced the coma. Induced the coma. Yeah. When you watch into that hospital room and mm-hmm. you see your, your close friend, the guy that changed your entire life, you know, that took you from being a valet to, you know, <laughs> being, having a career that lasted yeah. for the rest of your life. And you saw him in a coma with tubes and the beeping and everything else like that. You know, the crazy thing is when I walked in, I did not know he couldn't talk. Hmm. So I I go in, I grab his hand, and I'm talking to him. You know, he ain't responding, but I feel his hand. He was not supposed to move. His hand ain't supposed to move. But I feel him like he knew I was there, hmm. that he might be able to hear me. And then when I went out, that's when I found out he was in an induced coma. I'm like, I'm up here talking to him. And I'm like, what? You know, I'm just like, wow. It, it, it's crazy to see one of your best friends, you know, dying or, you know, in a bad shape. It's just, that's something different. That's something that's hard to take. Did you cry at that point? Oh, yeah. I mean, I cried in the room, not as much, you know, you try to be tough, you know, but. Yeah. Because I remember Dre had came just two hours before me. And I I just like, wow. It it was crazy. It was just weird, you know, just like, wow, this is crazy. 